So we're going to be covering Dynamic Selects, this part of Dynamic Content for Elementor, an incredibly powerful plugin. And over the coming weeks, I'm going to be showing you how to use various different aspects of this. Today, Dynamic Selects. So what exactly am I talking about? Why would you want to use them? And then how do you go about actually building one? Well, let's take a look at an example page. This is just a simple contact page with some relevant information, but we've got some dynamic selects on there that allow you to choose the country, and then we can sub-select the county or whatever you kind of want to break this down into. So let me show you. You can see we can fill out name, email, message, those kinds of things, but at the bottom we've got this please choose area. We'll select that, you can see we've got England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. So if we go ahead and choose, for example, England, you'll see we now get a subsection where we can go ahead and choose various different parts of England, for example, London, Essex, and so on. If we change that to something like Ireland, you can see inside there, we now get different select options. And finally, if we take a look at something like Wales, we get even more options. So what this does is it allows you to very easily streamline your whole select options. We've also got some conditional logic going on inside there. So now we've seen what we can create. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this using dynamic content for Elementor. Okay, so we've hopped back over now into Elementor. I've got my form selected, and you can see on the left-hand side, we've got our form options open, ready for us to start working. So as you can see, there's our name, email, and message, normal form fields. Let's go ahead and add a new one in now, which is gonna be for the country. So we'll select add item. You can see we've got some extra options inside here because we have dynamic content for Elementor installed. We're gonna be using some of these alongside some of the normal options. So first of all, we're going to choose the actual type of this form entry. You can see if we open that up, we now have a lot more options inside you, and these can be enabled and disabled via the settings part of Dynamic Content for Elementor. So if you don't want to use various different features, turn them off, streamline the whole setup. What we're looking for in this example, though, is the standard select field that's part of Elementor Pro. So let's just choose that as the starting point. We can give this a label. We're going to call this country. Now, we're going to put the options in exactly the same as we would in any other way. But first of all, we're going to put in choose location. Two reasons for this. We want to have something inside here for people to see what they need to do, but we're also going to be using this as the trigger to hide the next field based upon some conditions. Stick with me, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So next up, we can go ahead and just put in our countries. So I've now put my countries in. One more thing we need to do is hop over to the advanced section. We're going to change the ID of this to something that actually makes a little bit of sense. In this example, we're going to change this to country. Once we've done that, we can now close this down. Let's go ahead and add another form field in. This time we're going to be using one of Dynamic Content for Elementor's custom form fields. So we're going to select the options, and we're going to scroll down until we find the option for Dynamic Select. We'll choose that. We can give this a label, and we'll call this county or city or whatever it's going to be. For this example, county is going to be fine. Next thing we need to do now is set the reference field ID. Now, this might be a bit confusing to start off with, but all it really means is what's the ID of the field we want to reference to show the second level of information. So we're going to be using our country, and this is why I said it makes sense to go and give that a name. So let's go back to our country. In advance, you can see there's the ID, the unique ID for that form field. So what we're going to do is select it, copy it, close that down, go into our county, and what we're going to do in the reference field ID, we're simply going to paste that in. And there we go. So now no error message on the form field over on the right hand side because it now knows where to look for the values. And this is where the cool thing now comes in. All we need to do is take any of the values we have listed inside our country under the content, so England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, and we simply need to place those inside square brackets. So for example, let's come in, we'll do England. So what this is doing now we put it inside these square brackets is linking that to the information that's inside the country fields. I hope that makes sense. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can say London, Essex, and whatever else you want to do. So you've kind of associated that now. So if anybody chooses England from the country field dropdown, they'll then have the option, the second, the county field for London and Essex. So we just need to repeat this now for Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And then we just go inside each one of these and put in the relevant information for each of the counties inside those that we want to use. So I'm going to quickly do that and then we'll test this out. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead now, put all the values that I want to use inside you, linked everything up like I've just talked about. Everything is now set up. So let's test this out. Let's just update, hop back over to our page, and you can see there's our choose location. We can open that up. There's England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. Let's choose Wales for this example. And you can see underneath, Cardiff and Newport. If we go back and choose England, you can see London, Essex, Birmingham, and so on. And if we choose something like Ireland, again, you'll see we now have Dublin and Cork. Very, very easy. But just for a usability point of view, the last thing you want is this empty field when the choose location is there, when it's waiting for us to choose a location. Yes, you could just set this as the first value if you wanted to, but I don't think that's a really good way of doing it. I like to have the choose location to let people know they need to do something, call to action as it were. How can we address that? Well, we can use some simple conditional logic that again is part of dynamic content for Elementor. So let's go back over into our form. All we can do now is we can set up some conditions. So you can see we've got this conditions tab inside each and every one of these form entry fields. So let's go to conditions and inside there you can see we can choose to be always visible, to choose show if and to hide if. And if we click on show if, you can see it now asks us for an expression. Now this might be one of those things that's like, well, I don't really know how to do this. What exactly should I be putting there to show or hide? Well, Dynamic Content for Elementor has made this really, really easy. It's given us what's called a conditions generator. So we can click to open that up, and inside the conditions generator, you can see we can now go ahead and build out our condition. It will then give us the result, and we can just simply copy and paste that back into our form. So let's take a look what we need to do. Type of field the condition should be based on. Let's switch back to our form first of all. We're going to show or hide this based upon what is chosen from the country form field, the select, the first one. We're going to be using the choose location as our kind of trigger. We'll select that and copy it, just so we've got a copy of that ready to use. We we'll also need to go over to our advanced and make sure that we know the ID of this form field. So we know it's country, so we're going to go back into our conditions generator. We're going to set this to be a select field, because if you remember, the first one was a select field. We'll select that from there. Name of the field is country. Make sure you pay attention to the case that you use here. Then we can say the value should be, we've got equal to, not equal to, so all the normal kind of conditions. We're going to say be equal to. And then we're going to put in the value. So we're going to say we have a specific text value, or you could use numeric or a value of another field. So we leave this to a specific text value. And then our value we're going to use, we're going to simply paste in that choose location text. You can see at the top now that's given us the little piece of code that we need to make sure that our condition is set up correctly. And you can use this as many times as you want. It's really easy. And you can set up even more complex ones if you wanted to add in all conditions or and conditions to stack things and get really creative. For our example, we're going to keep it simple. So now we've got that. We're going to simply copy that from there. We'll head back over to our form. We'll close our country down and we'll open up our county, the one we want to show or hide. So inside there, under conditions, you can see we're going to say show this or hide this. We'll just drop in our condition. So what we're basically saying is if this condition is met, we want to do something. Do we want to show it or hide it? So we're saying if the country is choose location, we want to hide this. If it's anything else, it will show it. And you can see once we update this, hop back over to our test page and refresh this. You can see now that second field, the county field, doesn't show up until we choose one of the countries. So we'll choose England, and you can see now London, Essex, and so on shows up. Go back, choose Ireland, all those are back in there. And if we set this back to choose location, it then goes ahead and hides it. That's how you can get started using dynamic selects alongside the condition options that's part of dynamic content for Elementor. I think this opens up some really great possibilities to create really powerful forms, but keeping things streamlined and simple for the end user, which is always a good thing. As always, all the applicable links for everything I've covered in this video are down below, alongside a playlist of more tutorials on how to get started using dynamic content for Elementor. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.